All right, Josh, real quick, one more quarterback discussion. Carson Beck at Georgia. This is, an, this is another one where Georgia Twitter was going crazy, at least for the first couple of quarters of this game, because Georgia looked rough. Um, people need to understand new quarterback, new offensive coordinator, and the thing that everybody forgets. You know, you see the the reigning national champion coming in. You want to put up a 73 to nothing like Oklahoma did against Arkansas State. But that's not the Saban coaching tree style. Kirby Smart's not going to do it. Nick Saban isn't. And Sark's not going to do it either. They were going ultra vanilla in this game for a reason. You go into these games and you work on the things that you're not great at and you don't show your hand until you have to. So there's a whole half of the playbook that was not being used in this game, most likely. Um, Beck ended up with okay numbers, nine and a half yards per attempt. Um, nothing like Brock Vandegrift's 25 yards per attempt. But the cons- the slight concern I had in watching this was a lot of the yards that Beck put up were yak yards um, not even yards after catch, but a lot of times yards after contact. Um, so Brock Bowers, you know, he'd, he'd get hit and then get eight, nine yards after that. So I have a little bit of concern there because at some point you really need to be vertical. You can't rely on a dump off to a running back to go for 80 yards. Um, but I also think that a lot of people that aren't familiar with how Georgia operates, they're going to look at a game like, I think it was like Kent State or Akron or somebody last year, and be like, oh, Georgia sucks. They played that game close. Georgia plays that game close because they can. When they need to go get a touchdown, they get one. Um, so, Josh, having said all that and given all that context, um, how concerned are you from watching Georgia on Saturday? I am concerned, but not overly concerned uh the the biggest strength of this team was expected to be the offensive line which still has a tremendous amount of star talent um i thought they did fine they weren't dominant um we'll talk about this i mean nobody really looked dominant uh including you know alabama's line that was getting so much hype i thought played well but not not dominant either so that's that's not a surprise week one it takes a while for lines to play well uh my main observation was the same as you that the offense moved the ball pretty well. They ran the ball pretty well. I thought they threw the ball well through Brock Bowers. They really had no answer for him. Uh, Tennessee Martin clearly had matchup issues, shockingly, with the best tight end in the country and one of the best tight ends of the last 10-plus years. Um, but outside of Bowers, they kind of struggled. And, you know, they I'm, I'm just looking down the list right now. I mean, Bowers had five receptions for 77 yards, and the rest of the receiving core had kind of diddly squat, right? Dominic Lovett was brought in three receptions for 25 yards. It's like eight yards of catch. That's, that's not getting it done. Uh, Arian Smith had, you know, a big play there, but Ra Ra Thomas had one big play late. Um, but that's also the point where even UT, uh, UT Martin's rotating in. Um, I, I remain a little concerned about the depth of Georgia skill players. And last year they were able to kind of be people around enough that they could be an extremely efficient offense, even though we constantly talked about they really weren't a very explosive offense. They were third in the country, I think, at points per drive, which is crazy, um, given the fact that in terms of like long plays, particularly really long plays in the passing game, they weren't great. They got explosive plays sometimes in the run blame game. They had some yard, you know, yak plays like you're discussing. But I think the lack of verticality is going to be more of a problem. One, the scheme, I didn't, I don't feel like is, it's hard to evaluate, right? Because as you're saying, they're not showing anything, but it didn't seem quite as innovative or cohesive. And two, you don't have Stetson Bennett that just ran that system so incredibly well. They have plays where they're in the wrong alignment. They have plays where they don't hit the right read. And that just never happened. And people don't understand the effect of an offense that they were always getting the positive play. You couldn't blitz them and leave a guy open because Bennett would always see it and gain positive yardage. That's not happening now. And so if you don't have explosive plays to make up for those, all of a sudden the offense starts to stall, which is what we saw. Um, They still won the game by a heady margin. It's still a game where they were playing vanilla. They weren't probably particularly interested in it. I'm not going to overreact. But there is some legitimate cause for concern, or at least cause for me to be paying attention to this offense. And my initial my initial take here is they're probably not going to be the third best offense in the country in points per drive. Now, do they need to be? Probably not. Do they need to be top ten? 
probably not. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see where they're at. And honestly, I'm just going to have to see non-FS, uh, non-FCS competition in a game where they're trying to really evaluate that any further. Yeah, I think that that's the issue for me is like I'm not I'm not, you know, looking at this and saying, oh, George is amazing or George is terrible. Defense looks really good. Like there's some things you can glean from that defense to know that it's going to be legit. But I'm not I'm not you know, in there with the Georgia Twitter, at least in the first half that was ready to jump off a building. Um, because, you know, people were complaining about screens. Georgia throws <laughs> through plenty of screens, uh, for the last two years, winning national championships with it. So I don't think that's an issue. Um, I just think that it's, it's impossible to have truly evaluate a team or two teams playing one another with this much of a talent discrepancy, and that's why a lot of these coaches force their quarterbacks or force their OCs to play and coach with one arm time behind their back because they know if they go out there and roll out their full game plan, it's you're not going to get any better because you're just going to kill somebody, right? So from that standpoint, there's just not much to learn. We want to learn. We want to. We've been waiting all offseason for these teams to play. And these teams, a lot of them, played FCS, G5s, whatever in week one, which is fine because we don't have a preseason in in college football. But we're trying to put way too much stock in what we see when we really know deep down that there's not much to glean from these games. Josh, anything else on this before we move on? No, I don't think so. We're just going to have to keep watching games. And once we get more information the next few weeks, which is always the fun part to me, sort of getting this initial set of data and then evaluating it, reevaluating, we'll find out. Um, The only thing I'll add there is, you know, it's it's easy to watch these games in week one and draw a conclusion and say, well, we didn't know anything preseason, so now we know something, so now we've got to reevaluate our opinion. But so often the reevaluation you make is really based off misunderstanding the opponent more than the team. Like, right, we might be really misevaluating Indiana. Maybe their defense is phenomenal. And, And so I think after week one, you're there's a 50 50 shot when you change your opinion, if you're overreacting the wrong way, or if you're reacting the right way, it really takes two weeks minimum, more like three weeks or four weeks before you can sort of have any real sound opinion. And anyone that's jumping on anyone's throat, I personally believe at this point in the season, one way or the other in any take is probably off the wall, unless it's just totally completely ridiculously unfounded. Um, it's just too early. We don't know enough about teams and we don't know enough about opponents and yeah, that's what makes the early part of the season fun. 